No, this is not a green screen shot. I just like to do cool lighting. This is real. This is actually outside and I'm actually filming myself doing this. I just want to show you what's possible with what most people think is just a cheap little vlogging camera you only end every hand. Welcome back. My friend Rob from BNC Camera called me up one day and said, hey, we got the new G100 in. You want to try it out? I said, sure. So they gave me one. And wait till you see what's possible with this camera. We're gonna do some professional quality photo shoots and videos with this that's gonna blow your mind. And I wanna say hi everybody to uh, Darian and Rob and Joe, the owner. You guys are great. They're the only camera store in Vegas <laughs> from what I know. I get a lot of stuff from them and they're really great. So if you live anywhere in Southern Nevada, go check out BNC Camera. They're great. They love photography as much as I do and the owner is German like I am. So uh, we have a lot in common. Anyway, so I got the new G100 and I'm filming with it right now. And uh, right now, as you're seeing it, it's on IA, Intelligent Auto. I didn't do anything. I didn't white it balance. I didn't focus it. I didn't do anything. I just flipped it open, pushed record, and this is what you're seeing. It is basically Panasonic's answer to the Sony ZV-1 or the Canon M50. It's designed with social media in mind, but it can do so much more. It can take bigger pictures than a Sony A7S 3 or even a GH5S, twice the megapixels. It's very small. It has a super lightweight polycarbonate body. It has the same sense and processing engine as the G95 and the G9, but it's considerably smaller. It has a flippy screen, hybrid electronic image stabilization, advanced face tracking, but not only does it track your face, it also tracks your voice. Before I even got it, I already liked it more than the Sony ZV-1. They're pretty much exact same size, but this one has a viewfinder, unlike the ZV-1. And the viewfinder is really important for me because I go out in bright sunlight all the time and the LCD screen screen on the back is useless when you're in super bright sun. So sticking your eye up to a viewfinder is so important when you're out in bright light. The second thing this camera has over the ZV-1 and has a bigger sensor. It's micro four thirds versus one inch on the ZV-1. But that's not the real reason I like it more. The big reason is you can change the lens. So you can do this. This is my favorite Olympus 45 millimeter 1.8 or this. This is the 75 millimeter Olympus. You can put whatever lens you want on this camera, which just makes this so much more desirable for being artistic, having blurry backgrounds, just having more control over what you want. And this is the little tiny kit lens that this camera comes with. It's a 12 to 32 and I did a video review about it right here. It's an amazing little tiny lens and I'm going to show you in a moment what kind of amazing pictures you can take with this lens on this camera. Let me give you the specs first for the camera to show you what's so great about it versus the ZV-1. The G100 is twice the ISO, 25,000 versus 12,000. It has a built-in flash, the ZV-1 doesn't. It has four 4K photo mode, the ZV-1 doesn't. It has focus bracketing, the ZV-1 doesn't. It has focus stacking, the ZV-1 doesn't. It also has UHS card support so it can read and write at ultra high speeds, which the ZV-1 cannot do. This, by the way, is the 45 Olympus 1.8. Great lens to put on that camera. Okay, audio. The G100 has three microphones built into the camera that are hooked up to the face tracking feature. So if your face is on the left side of the picture, it uses the left microphone. If your face is on the right side of the picture, it uses the right microphone. If you're behind the camera, it uses the rear microphone. I am now behind the camera and I'm filming from behind the camera and this is what it sounds like when you have the rear microphone on. You can do surround sound or auto. In theory that's a, a nice thing but the problem is microphones built into the camera are, can only be good if you're close to the camera. Like right now I probably sound really good because I'm really close to the camera, right? Right. All right, this is the typical vlogging situation where you got the camera on the end of your hand facing you. It's okay. I mean, the camera is closer to your mouth. If you add some post-processing, which a lot of people do, you can sound even better than that. Uh, but for me, I don't like holding the camera on the end of my hand. I usually have it like four feet back. It's just a lot more steady. It's more calming. It's not jiggling around and I can control everything better. Uh, so now, luckily, this camera has a microphone jack, so now we can get serious. You take a lavalier microphone like this, which you can put in your pocket with you, and now you can get some good sound. Let's plug it in, shall we? There, so now you can attach a microphone closer to your mouth. Generally, it's about in this position for most people that clip it on their shirt, and uh, it, it just sounds so much better. Now, mind you, I use professional lavalier microphones. This microphone costs as much as this whole camera does, but there are good ones that still sound really good, and anything that's closer to your mouth, doesn't matter what it is, is gonna sound better than something that's further away. Now, I personally, as you know, hardly 
ever record audio right into a camera anyway. I always have a little portable recorder in my pocket that I that just records and I don't have to worry about a wire or wireless systems or anything. It's just a lot easier for me because I'm usually further away from the camera. But I'll get into that in another video. Right now I'm just showing you what this camera can do. So for those people who are just gonna hold the camera in the end of their hand, right out of the box, you can do it, it's fine. Just add some post-processing, it should sound fine. Or you can add the lavalier mic because it has a mic jack, which is great. And a microphone jack is something that's highly prized by vloggers because it just gives you the best sound. You can plug any kind of microphone you want, a shotgun mic, a lavalier mic, any kind of mic into this camera and get much better sound. So that's, that's really good that they put that in there. It has an external flash shoe for off-camera flash and we're going to do some professional flash photography in a moment. You're going to really be surprised at the quality this little camera can put out. It has time-lapse, slow motion, S and Q mode, which is stands for slow and quick, so you can do really slow motion or even quick motion. It has a better touch screen than the Sony ZV-1. This camera does not have an anti-aliasing filter, which is really good because that gives you sharper pictures. Some cameras use anti-aliasing filters to soften the picture to prevent moray patterns that are created when you have really fine lines close together, but it softens the image. This camera doesn't have that, so it gives you sharper images, which is really good. It helps it compete with APS-C and full frame sensors. That's good. By the way, I'm shooting with an Olympus 17 millimeter right now, the 1.2, the big one. I'm showing you different lenses that you can use with this camera and the kind of looks you can get. So pretty much everything I'm shooting with this video is this camera. So I wanna show you all the different looks and how good it looks and all like that. Now you notice I'm waving my hand and things like that and the focus isn't changing. That's another great thing about this camera is it has the focus more under control. In the past, Panasonic cameras were searching and going in and out with the focus and stuff like that, they've gotten that a lot more under control. This camera has the best autofocus of any Panasonic camera to date. It's the newest camera, and it has a lot of those things that people got frustrated with figured out. So the autofocus is actually really good with this camera. Really, really good, and it has face tracking. You can track your face no matter where you go. It, it knows where you are, and it focuses on your face, which is really good. It has V-Log L and high dynamic range, but I never use any of that grading stuff. Everybody's so into the grading thing. If you know how to light things properly and you do know how to use your camera properly, you don't need to do that, but that's a whole nother video. So let's get on with this camera. Another cool thing that's really good is, you know how a lot of times you push record and you don't know if it's recording or not? Like in the old days, camcorders, for example, have a blinking red light on the front. None of the DSLR cameras do, but this, the whole image is outlined in a bright red light, which is very similar to the recording monitors. So this is really good. You can really tell that it's recording because everything's outlined in red. It has an HDMI output, so you can see what you're doing on a larger monitor. And the HDMI output also obviously allows you to record externally. So you can record either in the camera or on an external source like an Atomos Ninja or Shogun or something like that. If that's what turns you on. It's kind of cool, huh? As far as webcam, you cannot use the USB, but you can use the HDMI, which probably better quality anyway. The time limits, being asked about time limits. It shoots in 4K. I never shoot in 4K. Everybody watches their stuff on a cell phone. We're not projecting it on a big screen. If you're shooting 4K, it, the time limit is 10 minutes. At 1080, 60 frames, it's 20 minutes. And at 1080, 30 frames, it's 30 minutes. And if you need more time than that, you just wait for it to stop and you push the record button again and it keeps recording into a new file. You might have only one or two seconds to missing in between. Uh, it is what it is. Anyway, it's a little tiny camera. This is not a big giant professional camera, but for a little tiny, tiny little camera that it is, it has, a, a, it, it really has pushed it pretty far, which is really good. And despite what other people say, this camera does have image stabilization and it's not that bad. It has five axis hybrid electronic image stabilization and it's actually pretty good. Now it's gonna crop in a little bit. It's got standard and high. The more stabilization you want, the more it crops in, but it does work. Here we are outside. I am now using the standard kit lens. Right out of the box, you get standard stabilization. That's what this looks like. This is what it looks like when you put it on high. And if you turn it off, this is what it looks like without stabilization. So you can see a difference. This is the kit lens. Let's put the 75 millimeter Olympus on here. This lens has no stabilization. Here's what it looks like without any lens stabilization and the camera doing all the stabilizing in standard mode. Not bad. Here it is with high stabilization mode in the camera. Again, the lens has no stabilization. And here we turn all stabilization off. 
pretty shaky, especially with a telephoto. So here it is again with standard stabilization on the 75. You can really see the difference. So yes, there you go. It has image stabilization and it's not that bad. And I don't like walking and talking. That is not me. I like sitting still. So I don't even need stabilization anyway. It's like the whole walking and talking while they're in shaking. No camera is going to be able to stabilize it perfectly. You're going to need a gyro for that. You're going to need a thing with a fancy a big thing, you know. And another thing this camera has, uh, remember it's designed with social media in mind. Normally, if you take a video vertically like this for like Pinterest or Instagram or whatever, you know, those things that have the vertical format like a cell phone. Uh, if you do that in a camera like this and you shoot it like this with a video, when you put it in your computer, it's back to like this, it's sideways. Well, this camera, if you shoot it sideways, you, the video you get is, is this way. It is vertical. It is the way you shoot it. Also, if you shoot it in horizontal mode, but you want a vertical piece of it for Instagram or Pinterest or something like that, it will show you a frame marker that shows you how much you're gonna crop in when you finally put it on social media. So that's kind of helpful. I personally don't need that, but it shows you. This is what it looks like if you were to use a vertical piece of it or a square piece of it. This is, this is where it would, this is how much you would use is what you do. So let's compare the G100 with the M50. It looks just like the M50, but it's smaller. Now I know the M50 is APS-C and the G100 is, is uh, micro four thirds, but the quality is really good. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. A strong point of the Panasonic interchangeable lens line is, all Panasonic lenses are the same mount. Doesn't matter if it's professional or non-professional, they're all the same mount. The M50, it uses a miniature mount, EFM, and there's not very many lenses to choose from. I made a video about the ones that are good. I made that video here, but Panasonic G100, you can use any Panasonic lens and there's endless amount of lenses that you can use. The G100 shoots full 4K, the M50 shoots very cropped 4K. The M50 has a lower resolution viewfinder. The white balance and the image review delay really suck on the M50. It has no 4K photo mode, no focus bracketing, no stacking, no post focus mode. The G100 weighs less, it's smaller, lighter, and it just has some more recent updated features that the M50 doesn't. And you can tell the G100 is not made for just vlogging. It has some scene settings like sweet dessert and appetizing food. So yeah, it's made for even doing all the things that a normal picture taking camera can do also. But you can also take pictures while you're taking video, which is really cool. I mean, let's say I'm recording right now and somebody's standing back there, if they push the shutter button, you can actually take pictures while the video is recording. That's really cool. One thing to be aware of with this camera, and I think other cameras too, and I realize this by accident, is you can turn off the auto face tracking uh, by accidentally touching the screen and you don't even know you're doing it. Like when you're looking through the eyepiece, your nose is touching the screen. So your nose is telling the screen, focus here. Because if you're left eye, if you look left eye dominant, your nose will touch the screen on the bottom right. If you're right eye dominant, your nose is gonna touch the screen on the bottom left. And that's telling the camera, focus down here. And then you're watching the video and you're going, why is my face out of focus? I thought the face tracking was supposed to be so good. Well, the face tracking is good if it's on. But if you touch the screen accidentally and with anything, it's going to turn off the face tracking and start focusing wherever you tell it to focus. So keep that in mind. That's something that took me a while to figure out like, why am I not in focus? But face tracking is actually really good with this camera. I mean, I can, hi there, hi there, hi there, hi there. Hi there. This is really cool. You can even retouch pictures in the camera. You can actually find a picture and if there's a part that you don't like that you want to remove, you just paint out the part you don't want with your finger and then save it as a separate new file. It's so cool. All right, talking about this thing is, is boring. Let's actually start taking some video and pictures with this thing because that's the fun part. That's what these things are made for. Okay, I put the Olympus 75 on here to make the background look cool. The following shots I'm going to show you now are just cool shots that I made with this camera. So Oh, enjoy, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna do two professional looking photo shoots with what most people consider a vlogging camera. And uh, you're gonna be amazed at what we can pull off with this little thing, which does more than just video. Yes, it takes awesome pictures too. And part of what makes, uh, is gonna make this look really cool is I'm gonna use strobes. And this is a flash trigger made by Godox, which is specifically made for Panasonic. And what this does is it raises the flash sync shutter speed from 1 50th of a second of the camera to 1 500th of a second so we can pull off a lot more when we go out to get some dramatic sunset pictures right after this. 
So we're getting ready to do some really cool fashion pictures now. So enjoy the sequence with the G100. So that was inside. Now we're gonna go outside for the second photo session in a moment. Is there anything I don't like about this camera? Well, there's only two things I can think of. One is the big lump on top. I wish the viewfinder was built into the body of the camera like the 6300 or the GM5. I know that would cram a lot more electronics closer together and might make it overheat more. I don't know, I, that's just me. I just wish it was more streamlined and not as awkwardly bulky like that. And the other thing is the battery. The battery doesn't last that long. I'm sure technology will get better to make batteries last longer, but that's just it. I mean, I can't think of anything else. Really, the camera's small, lightweight, it's great. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful little portable. The smaller and more lightweight, that's what I like. That's what I want in a camera. Right now I'm using the 45 Olympus 1.8, tiny little lens, one of my favorite lenses that's micro four thirds that you can use on this camera. You have to have the camera further back, but I like that look. I like that telephoto look with the blurry background. And no, this is not a green screen shot. I actually like to do good lighting and really interesting audio and sound and all that stuff to make it sound good and look good. And yes, you can do it with these tiny little vlogs cameras like this. All right, so now we're up on the roof. One thing about this little kit lens, the 12 to 32, it's basically a wide angle lens, which is great for a great unobstructed view of the sky, like here for dramatic shots. So I'm gonna show you what amazing shots this little tiny little lens can do. Not only is it small, but it's sharp and it takes great pictures. And we have the Panasonic flash trigger on top. I got a great model. Uh, let's just have some fun. our G100 video. What do you guys think? I love this camera. It's small, it's lightweight, it can change the lenses on it. The uh, face recognition is much better than any other previous Panasonic camera. Uh, it's so versatile and yeah I know we're vlogging right now at this moment but this, this is a camera. Take pictures with it. That's what cameras are for is to take pictures not just vlogs. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> Anyway, I might do another video about this. It's just a fun little camera to play with. I hope you like my channel. I try to give you uh, angles on things that most other people don't do, like the non-typical stuff. Uh, like using a vlogging camera to take uh, fashion photography. <laughs> Lumix? Lumix. Lumix. Lumix, yep. Cute name. Yep, yep, yep. Well, you do good. Thank you. You do really good. Yep. You make a good team. You want to do another video? Okay. Okay. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.